I've been waiting a long time to see this model. Let's see whether it was worth the wait. Keep watching. Yes, it's got a ukulele review day as ever back with the summary video review. If you look at the link below each of these review videos, you'll go back to the website and you'll get a lot more information about what I'm talking about. This is just the summary. There's also links down there where you can help to do what these people have done, which is help got a ukulele out to keep going because I'm not a commercial site. I don't get paid by brands to do this. So I rely on donations, very, very kind donations from people who help keep the site churning over each week. And you can also help me out by subscribing to the YouTube channel. If you hit the bell symbol, you get notified of new stuff when it goes live. Okay, uh, before I get into this one, first of all, quick word of thanks to Southern Ukulele Store for their new t-shirt, which I think settles the age-old debate once and for all as to how you pronounce this word. <laughs> Very good, thank you, Alex. Yeah, I've been waiting a long time for this one, and I've been waiting a long time for this one before this one was even developed. Does that make any sense? I'll explain why. Let's just get into it. This is the Carla Revelator Tenor ukulele. And it's a stunner. It's an absolute stunner. The reason I said I've been waiting a long time before this was even developed is the original model of this was developed by Welsh luthier, North Wales luthier, Pete Howlett. Uh, he's not Welsh, he's based in North Wales. Pete Howlett, who built this first, the Revelator. Um, now Pete's going had some health issues that are stopping him working in the way he always used to work so he's been scaling back and as part of that he offloaded this model and did a deal with Carla for Carla to make it to his specifications high specifications um so this these are now made by the Carla brand and um it's an unusual one. Now, Pete, when the first Revelator came out, called it an anomaly and said, well, it's an instrument that shouldn't work because of the uh, unusual construction. I actually disagreed with him on that because I've seen enough instruments from the likes of Bonanza, uh, Antica Ukulele Ria, and of course the Caravelle Kitchen one I looked at last uh, week, all very different from normal construction, but all punch and really, really do very well. And that's what this is about. Uh, the Revelator comes in a range of wood types, but this is one of the limited edition runs. But um, the back and sides on this are routed out two blocks uh, of Honduran mahogany put together and then routed out on a CNC machine to create a tray. Dropped on the top of that is some bookmatch koa. Also, there's a mango model. Uh, there are Karina models as well, but the koa is the top of the line limited run. And this is master grade koa, and you can see why it's master grade koa, because there's stripe and there's flame in it uh, to die for. Uh, the back and sides, mahogany, more simple, but I do really like that sort of pale stripe down the middle as well. But it's mahogany, so it's never going to be as attractive as this. I'll come on to something about that finish in a moment, though. Um, yeah, so it's this kind of clamshell, uh, so a tray with a drop top. Um, so sort of thick sides and back, very, very thin top. Uh, I understand why he said he didn't think it should work, but um, as I say, I've played instruments like this that do. The bridge is really, really tidy. I love how diminutive and simple that is. It's made of ebony, uh, very, very highly polished and nicely finished, fitted with a straight-topped bone saddle. It's a pin bridge. Those pins are made of ebony with um, little mother-of-pearl tops. The finish I was, said I was going to come on to is in a, a matte uh, oiled finish, uh, a satin. Um, I've got no problem with that, and I really like instruments like that, my kind of layers like that. I just think if you've got this sort of grade of koa wood, I think that gloss would really make it pop and shimmer more. Is that a, is that a complaint? I suppose it is a little bit. Uh, I think it, this would look stunning in gloss, Carla. I really do. Inside, there's not much to see. Um, it doesn't have any kerfing or back bracing because of the way it's constructed. The top is braced this way. Um, I will say, when I was doing some of the macro shots, because it's routed out, you've got the Carla Revelator logo there, laser etched on the back. <coughs> is the wood can look a little bit scruffy on the inside, and it's not finished. And it's very noticeable because it's up here. Again, very, very picky point of mine, but I noticed it in the macros. Uh, it's it's kind of a little bit you can see the tool marks 
Okay. Uh, the neck, people thought, is integral to this, but it isn't. It's actually jointed on uh, here, and that's what a wonderful bit of carving and detailing, the way that that sort of all just flows organically down into this uh, cutaway at the top, this Florentine cutaway. Uh, this is really beautiful. Uh, mahogany neck tapers up to a fairly round but squashed a bit profile, nice enough. 36 mil nut width, 30 from G2A. It's comfortable enough for me, but it is kind of average, but I'm not really complaining about it. Uh, the fingerboard is uh, ebony in super condition, really nice and dark black. It's got a really generous um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 to the body, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 frets. I don't think anyone's ever going to be playing up at 22, but there we are. Really loads of frets. The edges are bound in more dark wood, so there's no fret ends you can see, no sharp edges at all. Dressed impeccably well. The only outward facing mark I really like there at the seventh, which is this Nautilus shell design, because incidentally this this feature and the shape is called the Nautilus. Uh, as it's kind of its nickname, so that's really nice. But you also get side dots at 5, 7, 10 and 12 on the side as well. Really nice neck, this. Set up very good. Beyond the nut, uh, just a really simple headstock shape. I'm really pleased Carla went with that rather than their normal ubiquitous crown. It comes with the Carla logo inlaid in pearl and on these limited edition ones with the koa wood and the mango, I think, you get the this additional inlay. So that's like mother of pearl inlay of a koa leaf. Uh, you don't get that on the standard Karina ones. That's a nice touch to uh, separate it out from those more basic models. I'll talk about basic when we come to the price. And the tuners are sublime Grover open gears in gold with black buttons. Really nice. What else do you get when well, you may have spied this? There is a passive pickup in there. I don't know what brand it is. I've tried to find out and I can't find out. But I'm just really pleased it's a passive pickup because there's a minimal amount of wiring down here. No control panels, no battery packs to worry about. Just a passive pickup that you can shape yourself. That's what I always want. So fair play, Carla, for doing that. Um, also comes with a really nice really good quality this is seriously good quality this is like the canalea padded gig bags really really tough padded gig bag that with great uh, zips and everything the strings are uh, in factory spec are worth with two wound strings on the g and the c but southern ukulele store prefer these fitted with ukelogic h sw4 p uh, with the pink uh, strings one to three and a flat wound noiseless uh, wound g um yeah uh, these are very good strings i've played these before so I, I trust their judgment on that one and the price 1999 okay right that's a lot of money um i know there's premium materials in here master grade co lots of ebony really good tuners there's a pickup in there there's a really nice bag but it is largely made by a machine. This is a block of wood that's routed out by a computer. Okay, there's hand carving here on the neck and there's dressing of the frets and all that kind of stuff. I understand that. But it is largely built by a robot. And I think, um, I understand why the, the, the regular Karina's are about 1,500 quid. Uh, I understand that it's also made in the USA, which I haven't said, uh, rather than China. So you've got USA costs and power and labor and all that kind of stuff. But I can't get away from thinking it's expensive and possibly too expensive. When I think about what I can get for two grand, I can get a handmade luthier build from Canada, from Martin Beck. Think about the canalairs you can get for two grand. Am I making too much of this? Am I upsetting Sus here and Carla? Sorry if I am. It's not enough to drag the final score down when you look at the written review. But two grand for a simple build. Um, no other decoration to it, uh, really, apart from these. Um, I think it's I think it's a bit too rich myself. Anyway, let's get into it. The finish and the build is absolutely impeccable. I can't find anything wrong with it at all. It's really nice. Um, I'd probably change the nut width wider a little bit, and I would prefer gloss. I think it would just set this color off a lot nicer. But it's really light. Well, it's a really light. 690 grams. It's not heavy. 
balances really well as well. Okay, and as I say, uh, well, as Peter said that he didn't think this should work. Um, oh no, my tune is playing up again. Well, that'll have to do. But with a good light build and a well braced top and all of that thin top, there's no reason why it shouldn't work, I don't think. And as I say, I've seen enough little skinny instruments built this way to know volume. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I've played louder, but it, but for the thin body it is, it's it, it's spot on. Uh, sustain though is. Oh my word, the sustain goes on and on. And that tone is really, really nice. How rich and full that is. lovely <laughs> that's loads of character to it it's got breadth right across the range which you often get with color oh, oh that's beautiful that's really nice i love that very nice sounding instrument played strummed Do you know what? There's something in my pocket that's slipping the ukulele. absolutely love the rich sound to that it's just really accomplished proper top table sound to it so that I suppose is surprising for a little skinny body um, that is that's really really lovely sounding instrument um, so I get it for that really get it for that it's really nice to hold and play as well it's just so there's so little of it it's it's <laughs> all day this is a very very good instrument um, the build is impeccable I love the overall look of it and the concept I always did from the first time I saw one of them wonderful neck really nice tuners nice bag passive pickup um, I think it's too expensive and I think I'd probably be getting one of the, if I wanted one I was in the market I think I'd certainly be looking at one of the cheaper ones not the Koa I think two grand's just pushing it too much um, Maybe I'm being really picky there. You let me know what you think. Have I got that wrong? Um, it is made by a robot, lar largely. I know there's other man-made stuff in it as well. I'm really going on now, aren't I? The Carla, in particular, the NSL Coa T. Uh, Coa topped 
Revelator tenor ukulele um, designed by Pete Howlett and made in the USA. Um, very, very good instrument that gets a good score. Um, thank you very much to Southern Ukulele Store for entrusting me with this one. Got my hands on one at the end and I'm glad to have got it on the ukulele reviews at last. Um, certainly worth a look. I know that these fly out the door really quickly, so I, what I say doesn't really matter, does it? Very nice little instrument, this. Right, thank you very much for watching and your support. One more to go in 2023, coming next weekend, and uh, then I am off for Christmas, and I'll be back with you in the new year. It's been really enjoyable. Um, I hope you have a very good week ahead in this crazy last week before Christmas when... The shops are insane. I'm looking at a car park over the road and it's overflowing. Um, why do people do this? Um, look after each other. Take care. Have a very good time. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.